Is it a knitting project or a baby mobile? I don't know. <laughs> Hello, my name is Bella and welcome to the 100 Acre Wool Knitting Podcast, where I talk to you about all the things I've been making every week. This week I have some exciting things to show you. I have a finished object, I have some works in progress, and I also have some new acquisitions to share with you. So let's get right into it. You can also find me on Instagram or Ravelry at 100 Acre Wool. And links to everything that I discussed today will be in the description below, so make sure to check that out if you are curious. Alrighty, so the first thing to show you today is a finished object. I have another finished object this week. I think this is the third week in a row that I have something finished to show you, so that's very exciting. And it's actually what I'm wearing right now. So this is a tank top that I've been working on for a few weeks. It is knitted and it is Lovely, lovely. I am so in love with how it came out. I just love it so much. So this is the Golden Oak Tank Top by Amanita. Amanita is the designer's uh, designer name. And I just, I love how this tank top came out so much. It was a super quick project. Took me, I mean, if I had only been working on this, I probably could have finished it in a couple of days. Um, it was very, very quick. So it's a, again, it's a tank top, and it's worked from the bottom up. So I'll try to show you. There's some beautiful lace detail here at the bottom, and you'll see it's very, very scalloped here at the bottom. Um, that's actually how I blocked it, is how it got so scalloped like that. It's actually, it was pretty scalloped. It was a little bit scalloped when I was knitting it, just um, pre-blocking it, and just having been knit straight off the needles. It was a little bit scallopy um, to begin with, but then when you block it, you kind of stretch the bottom with T-pins and open the lace up, so it's really, really pretty. I'll probably put a picture, a closer up picture here of what the lace detail looks like. It's just so, so cool. So this lace is charted out in the pattern, and she also wrote it row by row, um, so whether you like to follow charts by charts or by row by row. <laughs> They're both there for you in the pattern. So it's really, really fun. You get to start off with the lace at the bottom and kind of right when you're um, you know, excited about the project, when you have all that energy, you kind of get the, the tough stuff out of the way first, which I like. And then you keep working up. So kind of the main body section here is mostly stockinette. And then you have some slip stitch detailing that goes all the way down. And it's kind of the same design on the back as well. They, they look basically exactly the same. I mean, they are exactly the same <laughs> in the pattern. They're exactly the same for the front and the back. So yes, it's slip stitch detailing and the body goes really quickly. It's, it's very simple, um, just with the slip stitches and most of it being stockinette. It's also knit in the round, so the whole time you're in the round, except for up here, because you have to work these triangle sections separately on their own, but the whole body section, the whole body area is um, worked in the round. And so you're always doing knits, so I really, really like that. I'm not a huge fan of pearls, so I like that you're always doing knit stitches. And so this is worked in fingering weight yarn, and I think it's actually probably a lightweight fingering. It's the yarn that I used and also, well actually I used a different yarn than what the pattern called for, but I wanted to make sure that the yardage per 100 grams was exactly the same because I wanted to make sure the gauge would be the same. So um, I used Ritual Dyes um, Beast base name and Taurus is this colorway. And Taurus, I think it's part of their Zodiac collection, so that's kind of cool. And so yes, it's fingering weight yarn and for 100 grams of the skein, that's how the skein comes in 100 grams, it is 438 yards, I believe, which is very, very similar to what the original pattern called for. Um, that called for different yarn. But anyways, so it's a very similar thickness of the yarn strand. And then you also knit it using size US 6 needles. I'm not sure what that is in millimeters, but US size 6. So for fingering weight yarn, it's pretty big, and it actually gives you a very um, loose gauge it's not extremely loose, but it's looser than what I was used to prior to knitting this pattern. 
and I was actually kind of nervous about it um, when I had made my gauge swatch and I had blocked it so it was like kind of in its you know final form of the of the fabric I blocked it and it was seeming kind of see-through and for being a tank top I didn't want to have to wear anything under it besides a bra or a sports bra or whatever so I was like kind of scared that it would be kind of see-through but that's not actually how it came out um, it's totally you know not see-through obviously <laughs> so yes I'm very happy that it is appropriate enough to just be worn on its own you don't have to wear a tank top underneath it I think actually when I blocked this the fabric became more not tight but the it, the yarn probably bloomed and filled in all the gaps or more of the more of the gaps most of the gaps so I think it's totally great on its own and the yarn itself the yarn that I used it's a blend of superwash merino and silk and yak fiber and it's so so soft it's really really soft and lovely to wear and I also obviously I blocked it and the blocking soap that I use the the wool soap that I use has a little bit of lanolin in it and it just makes it a tad more soft so it just it feels so nice it feels so lovely so um, yeah blocking this really I think made it shine especially with the lace detailing at the bottom blocking it was a huge difference which I also have a picture of pre-blocking and post blocking which I'll put here so you can see kind of the before and after of what it looked like um, yeah that's this is so exciting to me <laughs> seeing how it looked before and, and how it comes out after the blocking so overall this pattern was very very lovely to follow it was very clear on most things there were a few things that I was confused about, but I ended up getting figured out. I figured it out and, you know, it was fine. Um, but then I think there are a couple of minor, minor mistakes with the pattern. Not so big that you would do something wrong, but it's just like, you know, minor like spelling or like placement issues that I think I might contact Emanita if she wants to fix them. I don't know. I mean, they're not huge, but maybe she would want to know. So. Yeah, I do highly recommend this pattern. That being said, that's not like, don't go buy it. <laughs> um, I do really, really highly recommend this pattern. It's just such a great knit for summer and spring, spring and summer. Um, we're still in spring right now, but I'm in Los Angeles, California, and it's already like 85 degrees outside, so it's feeling like summer already. So this tank top is definitely getting wear already. And it's very very nice to wear it's so comfortable and breathable and I'm n I know I'm just gonna love it so much <laughs> and it's gonna get a lot of use and I also am probably gonna want to make another one knit another one cuz it's just so pretty it's so elegant and simple very quick to make um, only uses a hundred grams for this size I made the size small um, this is the size small and that uses a hundred grams almost exactly oh my gosh I have a little thing to share with you guys so last week I talked about this pattern that I was making and I was saying that I was um, playing a bit of yarn chicken I didn't know if I was gonna have enough of the yarn since I only had a hundred grams um, one skein and the pattern did call for one skein but it was getting down to the wire and I really didn't know if I would have enough so let me show you what I have left <laughs> kind of insane um, I just made it can you see this this is like basically my ends like when I wove in my ends that's basically all that's left like it's crazy it pretty much used an entire skein of yarn which is also great in a way because I mean yeah it was kind of stressful to have the yarn chicken but it's also kind of great because you have like zero waste and like you don't have any little remnants of a skein that you might not know what to do with, that you might not know what to do with. Um, so yeah, it was kind of cool in a way. But yeah, so that's all I have left. Um, so that's that whole skein used up. So yeah, I do highly recommend this pattern. And I think that's all I have to say about it for now. If you would like more information um, on this pattern, I made a few little tweaks, um, a few little adjustments just for my personal taste. If you would like to know those things and more about the yarn and, and whatnot, 
and photos. I will link the project page below, um, so go check that out if you're curious. So the next project I have to share with you guys this week is a work in progress, and this is also kind of a new cast on. I showed you guys my swatch for this last week, but now I've actually started on the garment. I am making the Anne Boleyn design by Alice Starmore. It's a cardigan design. And the Anne Boleyn design is from a book called The Tudor Roses, which is designed and, and published by Alice Starmore. And that book, we are actually having a cow right now. I am co-hosting a cow with two other knitting podcasters, and that's Gabriella of the Merryweather Knitting Podcast and Zofia of the Burke Creations Podcast. So we are co-hosting that cow together. It is running the entire year long of 2021. So if you would like to join that cow, or if you're already in that cow, thank you for joining. I have a link below to our Ravelry group that you can go in there and see our little page um, that we've been updating with notes on the cow. And we're also gonna be having giveaways soon. I think Gabriella is actually gonna be doing a giveaway very soon. I know she's gotten her yarn for her first project, and I think she's going to be doing like a cast on giveaway. So if you're curious about that, make sure to join the cal. It's very, very exciting. I'm really, really excited about this cal and to see everything that people are making. It's just so beautiful. So back to my Anne Boleyn. I have cast on the Anne Boleyn this week and have started working on it. And here we go. <laughs> this is what it looks like so far. So the Anne Boleyn is a seamed cardigan. So it's the back panel and then there's two front panels with button bands and then there's two arms. So that's five pieces all together. So this is the back panel. The first thing that you work is the back panel. And it is top up. The whole thing is, or man, that's the second time I've said that. Bottom up. <laughs> the whole thing is worked bottom up and not in the round, obviously. I already said it seemed. So I have gotten maybe an inch and a half done. <laughs> this is gonna take a very, very long time. It's a lot of stitches, it really is. The gauge is very, very tight in this because the garment is supposed to have a lot of structure and it's very tailored, so it's supposed to be kind of stiff. Not stiff, but you know, quite a dense structure. Um, it's gonna be a dense fabric. And you might be able to see all of my bobbins here. Is it a knitting project or a baby mobile? I don't know. <laughs> no, actually that's kind of a fun idea. Like, I'm sure they exist, but a baby mobile made out of wool? I think that'd be kind of fun. Cause like, I mean, look how cute this is with all the different colors and the little bobbins. So that's kind of fun. So all of these bobbins are attached to the bobbles, bobbles <laughs> that are in the garment. So you'll see all the way across, it's going to be hard for me to show you, but all the way across every inch or so, we have a vertical line of bobbles, and each line is a different color. So um, the two end ones, and then the one in the very center, that line, those are the same color, and then these two, and then so on and so forth, it's kind of mirrored, it's symmetrical on each side. Um, but next to each other, they're all different colors. And I actually really love how it's looking so far. I think the colors work so well together. And I also like that they're very much spring colors. They're very, you know, light and cheerful, and they look very, very Eastery to me, so that's kind of cool. I'm really happy about that. These are definitely my, my kind of colors. And this yarn is Alice Starmore's Hibridian Two-Ply Yarn, which is what the pattern calls for. Um, Alice Starmore was, or actually Jade Starmore, her daughter, who is, um, I think the owner of Virtual Yarns, which is where they sell their yarn online, um, she was so, so kind to send me and the other podcasters that I'm co-hosting this cow with, she was so kind to send us the yarn for making, um, the garments from, that we wanted to make from the Tudor Roses book. So, this yarn was to, provided to me by her. And I'm so, so happy about that. She was so, so sweet. And so like I said before, it is a tailored garment. So there's going to be a lot of increasing and decreasing with the waist shaping and also the arm shaping. So I've actually gotten started on that so far, or already. And so I'm already decreasing with that. 
And it's really, really cool how she did that. She kind of made the increases and the decreases kind of invisible because she does it in the um, reverse stockinette sections here so that it never disturbs the baubles or these twisted cables. So there's twisted cables on either side of the baubles too. It's really, really beautiful details and very textural. It's really, really cool to, to feel and to look at. So yes, all the shaping of the garment is done within these little pearl sections. And it's so detailed in the pattern. She literally lays it out for you row by row. And it's just really, really easy to follow. I will say that the, the pattern is like 10 pages long. And it's like full pages. Like, you know, like a wall of text. So it's a lot of instruction. But I really appreciate that because it's very thorough and easy to follow. Especially when this garment, um, when you see the photos of it, it can kind of look intimidating and be like you know, overwhelming, you know, too much work, I can't figure out how to do that sort of a thing. I kind of felt like that that way at the beginning, but no, it's actually very easy to follow. Um, yeah, I would say if you know how to knit and purl, it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. I mean, yeah, it's pretty simple to follow. So as I said, there are baubles in this, which I had done some baubles before, but this has definitely been my best experience with baubles. Um, it does take a little while, um, that's probably usual <laughs> for bobbles, um, since there are a lot of stitches in every bobble, so you're just spending a lot of time on it, but um, yeah, I really like how they're coming out. They're very, very small and delicate, and I just think they're so beautiful. And this project has also been quite addictive to knit on. It has been taking me a very long time, especially with these kind of intarsia little bobbles where you have to switch colors and twist the yarns around each other and it does take a little bit of time to do just one row um, and with it being a kind of a tight gauge it also takes more time for that but it's been like really addictive like every morning I wake up and I just want to knit on it right away it's just so much fun to do and also with it being such a tight gauge I will say I've gotten some hand straining issues I guess um, which I've never felt before in knitting. I think my style of knitting, I don't usually get hand hurting issues. <laughs> um, but I think with it being such a tight gauge and I'm using more tension, I'm, I'm pulling the yarn tighter than I normally would. I'm kind of getting a little bit of strain where I feel like I have to do this and it's, it's just really tight. Um, which if you have any suggestions on stretches or something that you would like to share in the comments, I'm sure that would be helpful to everyone, not just me, um, any knitter, you know. I'm sure everyone can have some hand hurt issues sometimes. So yeah, share that if you have any suggestions on stretches or ways to prevent, um, you know, having hurt <laughs> muscles and stuff like that. So I think that's all I have to say about this project for this week. And the next project I've been working on this week is a little accessory that I have been working on for my grandma. She commissioned me to make her some mittens and some socks quite a while ago. She commissioned me in uh, December after Christmas. I had made her a hat for Christmas and she loved it so much she wanted some matching mittens and socks. So I got started on designing those for her. But I'm not really designing it. I'm kind of using a pattern and switching it up a little bit. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is the mitten so far. This is one of the mittens that I'm working on. And so this is the same chart as the hat that I made her a while ago, which I'll put a picture here if you haven't seen that before. So this hat was a design by Alice Starmore, originally by Alice Starmore, but I kind of changed the design a little bit. I didn't have the pattern. I don't have the pattern still, <laughs> um, but just from looking at pictures online of the color work and, you know, just the way that the hat would look in pictures online, I kind of made my own chart based off of that. I did try to make it look as similar as possible, um, but obviously there are going to be some changes because I just made it up myself. Um, but that being said, I'm never going to be publishing this as a pattern because it is Alice Starmore's design. Like, it still very much looks like her original pattern. So, anyways, that was just for her that I thought she would like that design, so I made that for her. 
But then I also had some, or quite a bit of extra yarn after that. So I'm making her matching mittens with almost the same chart. I have to try, I have to change the chart a bit because it is a different shape. Um, it's longer than the hat was, so I have to switch it up a little bit. But it is generally the same chart as the hat. So that's been really fun, kind of making up the chart for that. And so I've been working on that a bit this week and then also knitting more on this. I'm kind of doing them in tandem, designing the chart and then <laughs> knitting it, and it's kind of a fun process. So I'll show you what it's looking like being worn so far. Let's see, I think this is the this is the right mitten, so I'll put it on this way. Ooh, it's so pretty. <laughs> this is actually the first time I'm wearing it since I did more work on it. So there we go, that's how it's looking. So right now I'm doing the increases for the thumb, and then I'll eventually split for that and then do the rest of the mitten all the way up to the fingertips. I think she wants this to be um, closed mittens, so no fingers in this part, but um, a separate thumb here. And I'm gonna make it all enclosed because her hands get very cold, so I want her to be nice and warm. And I know it's like summer now, and I was just saying how it's like 85 degrees out, um, but I just want to get these finished for her as soon as possible. I've been working on so many things and I kind of forgot about them, so I need to finish these for her. Um, I know she'll be happy whenever she gets them. So, yeah, this has been very fun to work on. But I will say um, a little issue that I've been running into, a little thing that I have noticed that I'm doing when I'm knitting small circumference um, telework projects. So this is color work, obviously, and I have also knit another mitten that is color work. I made the uh, underwing mitts by Erica Hoyser. I think that's how, her, how you say her name. Anyways, they're color work mittens also. So a very similar construction to this, very similar, you know, kind of, um, I did magic loop for that too. So I'm doing magic loop for these, but I've been noticing an issue. So on the edges, I'm kind of getting a weird tension. And I've been trying to remedy it. I'm trying to like stretch it out so I can remedy it, but it keeps happening. So basically what I mean is that at each of these endpoints of the magic loop, kind of of each side of the row, you know, you have one side of the row here and then one side of the row there. Um, at each of the edges, I'm getting some like puckering that's happening. So I think what's happening is that since I'm doing, since this is color work, I think what's happening is if a color is kind of not used towards the edge of the end of the last half of the row, hopefully that makes sense. Like if, like if a color is used kind of further in than the edge, and then you have to use it on the edge here, maybe the tension is like I'm pulling it too tight maybe, tightening it too much, and then it's kind of puckering on the outside. So I've been trying to remedy that. Um, I've been trying to, once I start the new side of a row, I've been trying to kind of pull it this way so that the tension is hopefully even. But I'm still getting a little bit of the puckering happening. So yeah, if you have any tips on how to prevent that or how to fix it, that would be very, very helpful. I've also thought about maybe I need to use different needles for this. Maybe color work with magic loop for this small of a circumference. Maybe that just doesn't work. Um, so I've been looking at the flexi flips, those types of needles. Maybe that would help. Um, also, maybe I should use DPNs. So if you've had this issue before and you've either fixed it yourself or, you know, if you've had this issue before and you have a solution that you found, then please let me know. I know it would be very, very helpful to me and probably other people if they have had this issue as well. It's not a huge problem and it's only one small, very, very small area and I might be able to fix it in the blocking. Um, but, you know, if you have any suggestions, that would be very, very useful. And I think that's all I have to say for this project for this week. So let me get into my acquisitions for this week. So a couple of weeks ago now, I think it was a week or two ago, I had my birthday 
and I posted about it on Instagram and so many of you wished me happy birthday so thank you so so much for that but with that I received some presents from my parents um, my friends and family and of course I asked for knitting tools and you know things like that so I thought I would share with you a couple of the things that I got so the first thing was a gift from my boyfriend's parents they so kindly gifted me a row counting ring so I have been looking for a row counter for quite a while and I had only ever seen the like plastic little the little dial twisty ones and then I've seen some rings as well I thought that would be really cool they so kindly gifted me this ring and I've been keeping it in this in my little wooden um, tools kit which is so so fun so that's really handy and so this is the ring it's so beautiful it's all metal and it's got this kind of gold color to it so that's really really pretty and it just kind of looks like a regular ring when you have it on which I so appreciate that it's not super bold and in your face um, but it's so cool and it definitely works so it has two dials on it and they both move independently and it's super super cool you kind of just twist it and it works it's so awesome and I'll probably put a little video clip here of how it works and it also has these little silver spots to kind of so you know where your start starting point is so you know which section of the ring you're looking at um, if you didn't have that you could probably get confused like oh wait am I on row 13 am I on row 24 and you know but the silver one is kind of your zone to look at so that's really useful and I've been using this for my Anne Boleyn so far it's been working out really great for that. Um, there's points in the pattern where it says to work, you know, so many rows before there's another piece of instruction. So that's been very useful to kind of keep track of where I am. So I'll link this down below if you're curious about what it is. I think it came from an Etsy shop, so that's really cool. Support individual makers, I think that's awesome. And I just love this ring. It's been very, very useful so far. And the next gift that I received are some lovely sock blockers from my dad. Thank you so, so much, Dad, for these. They're absolutely beautiful. So these are also from an Etsy shop. And I have been wanting some sock blockers. I know they're kind of, you know, not super necessary, but I thought that they would be really nice to have and to kind of finish off my socks when I, when I knit them. I have some socks on my needles right now. So when I finish those up, then I will put these on and, and get them all blocked that way. So these are a matching pair, and they are all wooden, and then they are stained. You can kind of get whatever stain you want. I think they have a few options on their page. Um, and they're really, really good quality. They're very, very nice. They're very much sanded down and even all the way throughout. You know, they're very soft to the touch. Um, I've seen some sock blockers before. That I was thinking about getting but the edges didn't look very smooth and I was concerned about it you know grabbing onto the yarn onto the knitting and maybe um, doing something bad to it so no these are very very good they're very sanded on all the edges and it's very very smooth and they also smell really nice mmm I love that wood smell the wooden stain smell it's so nice so yeah these are so so cute and they have little leather hanging straps here that I can hang it up in my in my studio over here. So those are going to be so nice. I'm so, so happy with those. So cute. And then the last little knitting tool that I have to show you is a Nitty Knotty. So maybe you know what a Nitty Knotty is, maybe you don't. Um, as far as I can tell, this is usually a spinner's tool. Um, usually not a knitting tool per se. Usually spinners use it. But I actually had a need for one of these a couple weeks ago, and it would have been so, so useful for me to have one as a knitter. Um, so I'll tell you what that story was. I was starting on a pair of socks, which I talked about. Um, they're the Lottie socks, and I am knitting them two at a time, but I only had one skein of yarn that I was working from. So basically what I wanted to do was split the skein so that I could more easily do the two at a time socks so the yarn wouldn't get all tangled and crazy. So what I ended up doing was just unraveling my cake of yarn onto the floor just in like a big mound of yarn vomit. <laughs> and it 
needless to say, it did not work out well. So I got so many knots, it was a horrible experience, it took me way too long, and now I have a bunch of, you know, pieces of my yarn instead of it being all together as one. So it would have been very nice for me to have a nitty knotty so that I could, you know, nicely separate the yarn. So basically what a nitty knotty does is you can wrap the yarn around here and make your own skein, if that makes sense. So this is one of the balls of yarn that I had to wind um, from the sock experience. So basically what you would do, you can do this with anything. You can do this with an already skeined up skein um, that is still in its loop form. You can do it with a cake, you can do it with a ball, whatever. But basically what you want to do is you want to take one end here and then you wrap it around the top and then the bottom and then the top and then the bottom and what ends up happening is you just start making a big loop. So hopefully you can see here, once I do this a lot, it's going to make like a large skein, how its skein would normally come. So here, that's probably enough. So I'll take this off now, and then you'll see it's a circle. <laughs> hopefully you can see that. It's a loop of yarn now. So the one that I got, it kind of measures it for you. Basically, there's different lengths of this bar here that will give you different lengths of yarn um, as far as like how long the skein is, how long the loop is. So uh, if you wanted to measure how many yards you would use, you could wrap it and count how many times you wrap it, you know, count how many times it would pass this point, and then you could calculate how many yards are on this so you could split a skein in half perfectly and it would all be, you know, tidy on this little nitty knotty thing. So I think that's super useful for knitters and spinners alike um, if you ever need to split anything into a smaller amount of yarn. So thankfully I have one of these now, so I will never have that yarn vomit experience ever again. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, yeah, so this one is very, very nice. I think this one is also from Etsy, so I will link it down below if you would like to get one of these. And I'm not sponsored by any of these things that I'm showing you or telling you about. These are just things that I wanted to use. So I wanted to chat about them and share it with you in case you would find them helpful as well. So that is everything that I have to share with you guys today. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. If you did enjoy, please make sure to like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already to this channel. And click the bell so that you're notified when I post again. And also, I forgot to say this at the beginning. Last week, I called for test knitters for a new pattern that I'm putting out very soon for my mare sweater design. Um, I did a call for test knitters and the test knit is begun. I have sent out the notification to all of the test knitters who have been selected for that. So if you applied, please check your email and see if you're part of the test knit. I am so, so happy for this test knit and for this pattern to go live soon. It's just so exciting. This whole process is so exciting. So, um, yes, thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye-bye.